Russia's capture of Bakhmut is pushing forward, but politics, of course, always play a part, and things are getting weird. Is a Russian influencer building his own fan club and maybe army? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It's April 18th, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get into it. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the combat map. Uh, biggest changes, of course, are just a relatively uh, minor amount of progress by Russian forces advancing a few blocks from the north on this reservoir. Interesting because we haven't seen that much advance from this northern front. We've actually seen this um, small but significant front line here where most Russian advances are taking place. And some intelligence indicates that this line is... Uh, the actual seizure of Bakhmut is being done by Wagner Group forces, while the Russian VDV is supporting from the north and south uh, flanks. But the question is, is this capture reflective of VDV work or is it Wagner Group work? Certainly, it looks like Wagner style tactics where um, assault detachments, uh, a concept that was uh, in this war pioneered by Wagner itself, relying on low skill light infantry supported by higher skilled professional soldiers with things like BMPs, indirect fire, uh, mortars, thermobaric rockets, and other uh, support equipment conduct these block by block, uh, strong, strong point breaking advances. Um, but there are, of course, at least for several months, this has been Russian MOD doctrine as well, the creation of these assault detachments. So what started in Wagner and probably is, is best and best done by Wagner um, is still going, is still not unexpected to see it from uh, Russian MOD forces themselves. But I, I sort of doubt the VDV, the Air, Russia's elite airborne corps, is going to necessarily operate an assault detachment in the same sort of high casualty frontal assault methods. Um, still, they may find themselves, uh, so this may be their handiwork and it may be Wagner's handiwork as well. Um, I'd probably put my money on Wagner, uh, but that's just me. Now, let's take a look at the combat map. As you can see here, right around 70 attacks, uh, you know, a 15 or so percent increase from yesterday. Um, but you can see, again, economy of force. They're very concentrated in the same set of regions. Now, here's where things get kind of interesting. First, um, we have uh, uh, Daddy Vladdy has decided to visit the occupied regions of Kherson. Uh, he has, of course, visited the headquarters of what Russia calls its Dnieper group of forces. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, in Kherson, uh, in the southern region of Kherson, and he visited the Vostok National Guard in Luhansk region uh, to discuss Russian war efforts. So this is interesting. Of course, this is probably an LNR formation, and this is the uh, Russian MOD formation there in southern Kherson. So this is a... Uh, Interesting, again, it sort of completes his visit to all four of the annexed regions, which, as you may recall, Russia actually declared to be parts of sovereign Russia. Um, the belief at the time was to lay the groundwork for a full mobilization. But politically, I think Putin feels that a full mobilization uh, isn't something he can politically survive. Nonetheless, technically, this is considered part of Russian sovereign territory. Um, and... In the last two months, he's gone to Mariupol and Donetsk, um, and now, of course, he is visiting two other regions, uh, Kherson and Luhansk, and of course, we know that next up will be Zaporizhia. Uh, just to show you guys on the map where he's probably looking at, uh, the annexed Kherson is everything south of the city here. Uh, Zaporizhia is around these port cities. Um, Luhansk, you can see the city right there. Um, so chances are, right, he was probably visiting. These are areas deep into the front lines. Again, probably followed a similar protocol to the uh, U.S. president's visit. Uh, there may have been some deconfliction efforts where they said, hey, listen, Putin's going to be visiting in the next two to three hours. Um don't try anything because it will be seen as dangerously escalatory. Um, and I honestly suspect that um, 
the U.S. probably, if that were the case, the U.S. probably told Ukraine, "Listen, don't don't do this. Uh, a, you know, taking out a head of state would put Russia on an escalatory path that they probably can't deviate from." Um, so, but again, this is all about Russia uh, and Putin trying to. Uh, in my opinion, he seems like he's trying to compete with Prigozhin, right? Prigozhin's out here recording himself in Bakhmut, which, you know, yeah, Wagner is a group of, of war criminals. There's lots of credible evidence that Prigozhin himself is complicit in some of their worst behavior. But in terms of his media presence, um, Prigozhin is uh, doing things that no commander almost... Uh, I hate to say it like this, but but he is a commander in the social media era, uh, truly. And he understands social media and marketing and creating an image in a way that uh, I've never seen a commander do. Uh, again, this isn't me praising him. This is me acknowledging the skill set that a butcher has. Um, and, and make no doubt, again, there's a lot of evidence that Wagner especially and particularly are butchers, but uh, he has mastered the social media game um, and Putin is trying to play catch up by showing himself visiting these regions, being more active in the war effort, um, but in a way that's mu seen as much less risky, uh, both physically risky and politically risky. Um, I'd be very curious to see, again, little different if Putin were to put on fatigues uh, and body armor uh, and tour the front lines. Uh, it would be certainly very interesting. Um, never mind. I'm not going to make I'm not going to make any comments. I'm not going to uh, get demonetized by advocating for violence against anyone. I, I, all, all I want is this war to end uh, and Ukraine to remain free and sovereign. <clears throat> OK, anyway, uh, the other thing that things there were things get even weirder. Yeah, that's right. That. Yeah. OK. Former Russian officer and ardent nationalist Igor Gherkin has founded, quote, the Club of Angry Patriots. And don't worry, guys, it published its manifesto focused on protecting pro-war factions in the Kremlin from sabotage and betrayal. Interesting, guys. Remember, Igor Gherkin was a commander uh, in the uh, Donbas separatist uh, regions 10 years ago. Uh, also probably a war criminal given his, um, I believe it was some of his units that shot down those civilian airliners, um, likely on his orders. But he, of course, uh, is now a social media influencer, uh, literally a Russian equivalent of, of, you know, someone like me or Arthur Ray, right? A, a military veteran who is uh, using his expertise to uh, inform and advocate on social media. And so now he's formed his own club club of angry Patriots, uh, a telegram channel emphasizing, of course, um, Right. The manifesto claims that unspecified actors who remain in power in Russia have transferred their money and allegiance to the West and may be preparing for a coup and the dismemberment of the Russian Federation. This is some conspiracy tinfoil hat level stuff. Manifesto likens the Kremlin's pro-war and anti-war faction between to a civil war between the Reds and Whites following the Bolshevik Revolution and claims that Russia is currently fighting the war in a mediocre way and is unable to defeat Ukraine in its current state. Uh this is weird. These informal clubs, um, they can be a lot of things. And it sounds like, again, if anger and outrage is, is literally baked into the name, um, this is usually, this can be just simply a power based consolidation, um, bringing people into the fold, um, making them commit uh, in a way that is more than just a passive fan, um, can really mobilize people around a cause. Uh, but more than that, uh, it, it may be Gherkin's efforts to protect himself. 
right? In the way that Prigozhin, because he commands the Wagner group, he has a, a level of protection that Gherkin himself doesn't have. But by having, again, just a few thousand committed supporters, uh, the difference in terms of power and leverage can be tremendous, um, especially in a place like Russia, um, where having a base of support uh, can guarantee political survival and grant you freedoms not available to regular Russians. As we saw, uh, there are considerable Russian laws forbidding the uh, disparagement of the special military operation, but Prigozhin disparages the special military operation on virtually a daily basis. And the reason he can do so is because he is he commands both money, but also more importantly, power in the form of a loyal organization, i.e. Wagner. So uh, I suspect actually very strongly that Gherkin is trying to leverage, um, again, a light version of that. I don't think they're going to become PMC anytime soon, but I suspect that they will be um, demonstrating, writing, and using their collective political power to advocate for the pro-war Russian stance. Now, obviously, I'm not out here founding the club of... um, you know, American patriots yet. Uh, <laughs> that's a joke. Don't worry, guys. Uh, but I do have combatvetnews.com. I got booted off Patreon because Patreon no longer uh, wants war content on their platform. That's fine. Um, certainly I drop all the news stories that I can't cover, uh, here in the daily updates, all my YouTube videos for free. Uh, but if you want to support what I do, uh, cause certainly YouTube, uh, is in no hurry to, um, you could support me by becoming a member, right? Just $4 a month. Oh man, I logged out, logged myself out. Um, but you can get access to members only content, which is all the old Patreon videos plus all the uh, weekly updates where I take a look at the helmet cam footage, the drone footage, the combat footage that YouTube uh, just won't let me show you. And it's uh, great access, right? Of course, shout out to all of our members. Uh, we have all our lieutenant tier members here. Uh, there's a ton of them and we're going to update this list, uh, you know, every, every week. Plus really thank you to our Colonel tier members. You guys, you guys do so much, uh, for me. I appreciate you so much. Check out combat at links in the description. I'll see you in the next one.